First of all, I'm not a doctor. I don't pretend to be one and I don't play one on TV. These are my own supplements that I take each and every day to stay healthy and fit. Number one, I like to take a digestive enzyme containing betaine hydrochloride. Now, you are what you eat. That's not really true. You are what you assimilate. So these supplements will help you assimilate the food and help you assimilate all the supplements that you're going to take with your food. Now, there's a trick to knowing if you actually need it in your gut. Because some people have enough hydrochloric acid to assimilate their foods by themselves. But because of stress levels and so on, we are not producing as much hydrochloric acid as we did in the past. The trick to knowing your dosage is you would start at 200 milligrams in the middle of each meal. You would start with the first meal, 200 milligrams. And if you do not feel a heartburn sensation about 20 to 30 minutes after you finish the meal on your next meal, you can move the dosage up to 400 milligrams and keep adding 200 milligrams at every meal until you feel a heartburn sensation. 20 to 30 minutes after you finish your meal. Now, do not go over 1200 milligrams per meal. If you are at 1200 milligrams per meal and you do not get a heartburn sensation 20 to 30 minutes after your meal, you have the insurance that you are not producing enough hydrochloric acid and that it would be a really great idea if you did increase it by supplementing with a betaine hydrochloride supplement. So at 1200 milligrams per meal, no heartburn, you absolutely need it. If at a certain dosage you do get heartburn, you drop the dosage by 200 milligrams and that would be your dose that you would use at every meal. If that dose starts giving you heartburn after a while, you can drop another 200 milligrams until maybe one day you might not need it at all. So beta hydrochloride makes you assimilate your food and your supplements. Number two on the list would be vitamin D3 along with K2. Now you can get your vitamin D with the sun, but you would actually need to have about 70% of your skin exposed to the sun for at least half an hour. And know that if you put sunscreen on your skin, you will not absorb your vitamin D optimally. One way to do it is by using a supplement of vitamin D along with K2. The K2 helps in reversing the calcification of your arteries, so it's kind of a good idea to have it in there. Now, what it does, it's fantastic to boost your immune system. Every cell of your body has receptors for vitamin D3, so it is one of your most important supplements to take. It is, I have heard in the past, that the closer to the equator one lives, the lower the chances of cancer, and the way they figured that out is by the exposure of the sun. The closer you are to the equator, the more exposure to the sun, the less risk of cancer. Might be true, might be not. Something I heard through the grapevine. Now, you can do a 25 hydroxy vitamin D test to figure out what your correct pathology should be. I have never used vitamin D and are not a lifeguard in the sun with 70% of your skin exposed to it. Then I would start with maybe about five to 10,000 I use for a little bit, maybe a couple months. Then I would get my blood check for vitamin D levels. It's a very cheap test and you can adjust the dosages accordingly. Number three favorite supplement would be animal source of omega-3s, mainly rich in EPA and DHA, not the vegetable form in walnuts. Every cell of your body has receptors for omega-3s also kickstart the genes that help you burn fat and help inhibit the genes that help you accumulate fat. We used to always live close to the rivers when the hunting was bad back when we were hunter gatherers. So for thousands of years, our DNA was used to having adequate amounts of omega threes. But in today's society, we have way too many omega sixes than omega threes. Now remember omega threes have an anti-inflammatory effect. Omega-6 fats, like mainly vegetable oils, have a inflammatory effect. So we want to rebalance these out to have a one-to-one -one ratio well, that would be optimal for health. The dosages of omega-3s will depend on your body fat. I like to use one gram of omega-3s per percentage of body fat that I carry. 
The fatter you are, the more omega-3s you will need. And that doesn't make a bad person out of you. All right. My number four favorite supplement is the mineral that almost everybody is deficient in. And I'm talking about magnesium. Now, magnesium helps to regulate your sleeping patterns. Also helps your body detoxify cortisol, therefore lowering your stress hormone cortisol. It aids in 300 metabolic processes. This is back in 1960s. Now it's over 700 uh, metabolic processes. So pretty essential for the well-being of every almost everything in your system. But you can get a red blood cell magnesium test to figure out if or how deficient you are in magnesium. Now, if you're not used to taking a magnesium supplement, I would start two to four grams per day in the evening to help you sleep. And after a few months, I would get the red blood cell magnesium test and adjust the dosage accordingly. My number five favorite supplement is zinc. Now, zinc helps reduce the conversion of testosterone into estrogen, therefore increasing testosterone levels. It's also a fantastic immunity booster. I would shoot for about 140 milligrams per day in divided dosages for a couple of months. Then I would do a red blood cell zinc test to figure out my levels and adjust the posology accordingly. Six supplement would be a good quality multivitamin. Now this guys is just an insurance that you're getting all the vitamins and minerals and, and all the cofactors for all the metabolic processes to occur optimally. If you're in a caloric surplus, you won't, won't need as many multivitamins, maybe just once a day. But if you're in a caloric deficit, you're not getting as much food in, as many minerals. So I would maybe supplement with a multivitamin twice a day. My number seven favorite supplement would be L-glutamine. Now, L-glutamine is your number one friend to repair gut health. A healthy gut makes a healthy person. Hippocrates about 2,500 years ago said that all diseases start in the gut and he wasn't far from the truth. Now glutamine is one of the best immune system boosters out there, mainly because if you repair the gut, you will have a better immune system. For everyday maintenance of glutamine, I would take 10 grams morning and evening. If you're in a very low carb diet or a ketogenic diet, you could use glutamine post-workout to replenish glycogen stores. So this is a little trick to uh, fuel up your muscles with glycogen after a workout without actually taking in carbs. So you're staying low carb and getting the benefits of a low carb diet. My number eight supplement would be probiotics. Now probiotics is a great immunity booster and inhibits the growth of the harmful bacteria in your gut. Now you're keeping the good bacteria in check, you're keeping your whole gut health and microbiome in optimal health. If you are taking antibiotics or have taken antibiotics recently, make sure that you rebuild your gut health by using probiotics because the antibiotics kind of kill both the good and the bad bacteria in your gut. So you have to rebuild your gut after taking antibiotics. And I would shoot for 50 billion CFUs of probiotics from different strains. My number nine supplement is what I call my anti-aging supplements is trans resveratrol. Now, whenever they say that drinking red wine is great for your health, it is because of the resveratrol in red wine. But to get a dosage of resveratrol that is significant for health reasons, you would probably have to drink about 12 balls of red wine to yourself every day. Now that would cause probably other problems. It's best to supplements. Transresveratrol, one of your best anti-aging supplements. It helps to inhibit the conversion of testosterone into estrogen. Is a pretty decent antioxidant, but great for longevity. I would shoot for about one gram a day of resveratrol. My number 10 supplement would be coenzyme Q10, mainly because I am 50 years old and this is one of my anti-aging supplements. Now it helps in energy production and helps limit oxidative stress. I would shoot for about 200 milligrams per day of coenzyme Q10. 
Now for my bonus. If ever I start feeling sick, you gotta catch it really, really early. So this is what I do when I start feeling sick. I go for a whopping huge dose of vitamin D3 and I aim for about 100,000 I use one shot. I wouldn't use vitamin D3 for the rest of the week, but that big whopping dose will help my immunity uh, get stronger. Would also use 10 grams of L-glutamine every waking hour the first day I'm starting to get symptoms of a cold or whatnot. Third, if available, I would do an intravenous vitamin C therapy. Now, they shoot high doses of vitamin C in your veins and this greatly boosts your immune system, all right? I would then also increase my water intake. I would drop the starchy carbs in my diet or I would eat resistant starches. Now, resistant starches are mainly, as an example, potatoes or rice that have been cooked and have been cooled down in the fridge for about 12 hours. The starch converts into what we call resistant starch and this is great food for your gut bacteria, making your gut bacteria very, very happy. Whenever I start feeling sick and I catch it early, I do this and I, within a day, I'm good to go. The next day, it's gone, history, and I'm back to my normal self. So these are my top 10 supplements. Subscribe, comment down below what your supplements are in your own arsenal of supplements. Seize the day, my friends.